by uh, the clergy from the, well, all over the area, Sheboygan. And uh, they would like us to put it up here in the council chambers or somewhere in City Hall. So what I will do is I will have it put up in a council chambers here somewhere where everyone can see it when they come in the door. And uh, I thanked them for it. And Alderman Manny, would you like to say a few words? You were there last night. Excellent job. Your name's on there, and thank you very much. Okay, with that, we'll call a special common council to order. Debbie, would you call the roll, please? Bowman? Here. Bird? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Here. Straw? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Reinfleisch? Here. Stephan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Wanger? Here. 16. Quorum's present. Alderman Groff. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would um, move that 1630, which is an RO by the city clerk submitting the communication from LTC and closing their 2003 tax levy report, and that's 1631, which is a RO by the city clerk submitting the tax levy certification for the 2003-2004 school year from the village of Kohler, and 1632, which is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from the SASD along with the 2003 school and recreation um, tax levy to be used in 2004, that all three of those ROs be accepted and filed. Sorry. It moved in second to file all 1630, 31, 32 of the ROs under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Bird? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Bra? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ryan Aye. Stephen? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. And Baumann? Aye. Motion carries. Alder McGraw? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, I would move that 1646, which is an RC by Strategic Fiscal Plan. Uh, recommending additions of 227,354 to the proposed general fund balance, proposed general fund budget for capital outlay appropriations that are, that are, that that RC be accepted and adopted. Okay. It's moved and seconded at 1646 and seven, you said? Just 46. 46. Who seconded it? Alderman Warner. Be accepted and placed on file under discussion. Adopted, excuse me. Adopted, not filed rate. Right. It's been accepted and adopted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1647. Your Honor, I'll move that, that RC by strategic fiscal plan uh, where um, it's recommending reinstatement of appropriations to the budget of 26286 for the city assessor and 20000 for police communication that that um, RC be accepted and adopted. Let's move to the second that the RC be accepted and adopted on 1647. Is there any discussion? Hearing none on that, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. <laughs> Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 1544, Resolution 1770304 by um, Finance Committee, ordering the 2004 budget appropriations for the City of, of Sheboygan funds. I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second to resolution 1544 be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Rainflesh. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move to restore the $19,000 in funding for the Boys and Girls Club. Second. It's been moved and second to restore $19,000 for the Boys and Girls Club. Alderman. Under discussion, uh, first I'd like to address the issue of cost regarding the Boys and Girls Club. 
It would cost us $19,000 to keep a program running that gives hundreds, if not thousands of children, a place for amusement, entertainment, education, and most importantly, a place Alderman, where they- Alderman Reinfeldt, before you go too far, yeah. hang on a minute. Sure. We need this for the next document, Correct. 1545. So can you hang on? And, I will. One, one more, just hang on a minute, okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, if there's another discussion on 1544, now I need a roll vote, a roll call. Would you call the roll, please? Tone? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Grau? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Reinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Swangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Burke? Aye. Motion carried. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Under 1545, <clears throat> resolution number 1780304 by the uh, Finance Committee, ordering the 2004 budget appropriations and the 2003 tax levy for use during calendar year 2004, mm -hmm. I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Move to second the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Your Honor, if I may, I'd like to amend the, um, the appropriations to include um, a revenue adjustment of um, special assessments, fund assessment sidewalk, um, $80,000 be taken from there and moved to, let's see, special assessments, be moved to assessment sidewalks, um, $80,000, I believe, um, which has that. And that included in that adjustment, uh, there is 56935 of that amount moved into Fire Department Revenue State Municipal Services payment. Is that correct? Just to clarify, uh, it's on page four. Page four of the handout. Yeah. <coughs> there was a clerical error in entering uh, the amount of revenue for the uh, Fire Department and the State Municipal payment. <coughs> And that was overstated by $57,000. So our proposal here is to move the uh, sidewalk assessments. All, all the assessments except for paving are in the 2003 budget. But what we're proposing is to leave the sidewalk assessment in, two, in 2004 in the general fund and move all the other ones for this year. So the $8,000 will be retained in the general fund. And that would act as an offset for that adjustment that we have to make of fifty-seven thousand dollars in the in fire revenue. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion before us under discussion. <coughs> Alderman Stefan, are you speaking on the? I'm at the Okay. Um, obviously, we've got a fifty-seven thousand dollar adjustment we need to make. Wouldn't it make more sense to just? Move fifty-seven thousand dollars of it in, and leave the other remainder in there. Administratively, be difficult because when we're maintaining these receivables, we need to know where to put the payments to each year. And you couldn't just put the first fifty-seven thousand there. The next twenty-three. It'd be administratively difficult to, to do that at this point in time. Okay. Okay. If there's no other discussion on amendment, would you call the roll, please? Doyle. Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemere? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Reinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Warner? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wanneman? Aye. Bowman? 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 Aye.
I'd like to address the issue of costs regarding the Boys and Girls Club. It would cost us $19,000 to keep a program running that gives hundreds, if not thousands of children a place for amusement, entertainment, education, and most importantly, a place where they gain a sense of belonging. The club is a place where they learn how to be members of our community. It is a place where they develop their constructive skills. What are the costs if the Boys and Girls Club no longer existed? We could expect an additional 180 new gang members in Sheboygan for kids join the club in order to get a sense of belonging that a gang may otherwise provide. Taxpayers' costs increase with the need to deal with the gang members' destructive behavior with additional policing costs, with graffiti cleanup costs, and vandalism repair costs, and in the other costs of crime. Thursday at the budget hearing, we heard a quote from retired General Colin Powell, which I too would like to recite from. The choice is very simple. We either build our children or build more jails. It's time to stop building jails and get back to what we know how to do as Americans, and that is build our children. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about funding. I did have a recommendation that um, uh, we could fund this without having to raise taxes, but I understand that through some other appropriations that those funds are no longer there. I still like to make this recommendation because I do think it's important, but I do want to stress that uh, hopefully we can find a way of doing this uh, with your help, Your Honor, without raising any, the tax levy or tax rate. We have already dedicated ourselves to, beginning working, to begin working on next year's budget right away. The budget for 2005 may be even more of a challenge than this one has been. More cuts may need to be made. But it's important to keep the Boys and Girls Club operating again for another year. If we cannot support the club next year to the same degree we currently do now, the club will then have a full year to try to replace these dollars by additional fundraising if need be. However, until then, I hope you all will support me in keeping such an important asset to our community open in 2004. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Stephan. Uh, yes, I, I'd like to address this issue. Uh, I apologize to Alderman Reinfleisch. He wasn't here last year. He couldn't know that the Finance Committee pretty much told him that last year. Um, I think Paulette's got a document that points out that we give the Boys and Girls Club last year, we gave them $10,000 in community block grant money. When they came in this year, they asked for 17, specifically because they knew they had been told the general fund money might not be there and probably would not be there. So we've done that, and that's one clarification I want everybody to understand. They knew it wasn't like we dropped it on them now and they didn't know for, you know, their whole budget process starts in January or something. They knew that, you know, and obviously just, I think any department had knew all year as they were doing their budget that anything they had wasn't guaranteed with the current fiscal prices we're in. I want to be clear, I'm a huge fan of the Boys and Girls Club, but, you know, I served on the United Way Executive Board. I served on the Finance Committee for the United Way. We looked at every agency, wonderful agency, but who's to say that they're any better than the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, the Children's Service Society, Reach Hotline, the Mental Health Association, the Big Brothers and Big Sisters, Safe Harbor for Abused Women, the Literacy Council. We've cut the Senior Center, we've cut the library. I agree, you know, absolutely they perform a wonderful, wonderful service. But we're talking about eliminating our own DARE program. We're talking about eliminating our own police liaison officers. Every other nonprofit group has been told we have the money, we have the allocations from the federal government, go to the community block grant, and Paulette has told them. And she's told the other aldermen that have taken the time to ask. We think it's a pretty good organization. We would recommend them getting this additional money above what they're getting now. They can't guarantee it because nothing's guaranteed until the committee meets that we have, you know, the mayor's appointments and it's a different budget cycle. It goes from, I think, April to April or something like that. So you can't guarantee it, but staff is certainly supportive of them. If we approve this tonight and they get approved for what they've already got, they've got 19,000 and they've got 17,000, that's 36,000. That's 150% of what they've ever gotten from us. So I, you know, I love the organization, but I just can't support giving them this kind of money. I think if we're gonna start being fiscally responsible, we've gotta say, okay, we've got an avenue for you and it's a community black man avenue. And that's, that's where we should send them. And I, you know, I, like I said, it's nothing personal. It's not that they're, they're a wonderful organization, but we've made, you know, decisions that we can't fund this out of the general fund anymore. And I understand that, you know, with the movement tonight, it would come out of the assessments for the sidewalks, but it's the same thing. You know, who's to say we couldn't find that 20,000 and give it for set, set, excuse me, Sunday bus service, you know, or give it back to the library and let them stay open that day that's closed. You know, these are decisions that we get paid to make and I just, I thought we made this one a month and a half ago when I, you know, I'm a little upset that now we're coming back and everybody's like, oh yeah, they're a wonderful agency, and they are a wonderful agency. 
But we've made cuts, we've made hard cuts, we've made cuts that frankly I didn't want to make. But we've done it, and I don't think we should be backtracking now. And I'm certainly not going to support this. Thank you, Alderman Stephan. Alderman Doyle. Yeah, I sort of uh, wish to reinforce what Bill said. Uh, I have six reasons for voting against it. Uh, first, the budget planning has been going on for more than a year, and heroic last-minute efforts to spend more money should be denied. Number two, our budget figures for next year are set. If the council uh, funds this request, either the tax levy has to be increased, some request has to be cut from the budget, or this money has to be taken from some contingency fund. All of these options are bad and will hurt some deserving program like the police or the fire or other department. Third, uh, the Boys and Girls Club is a worthwhile charity, but we need to control our spending, not increase it. There are at least 100 charities in this community that could come here and give you a wonderful reason why life would be infinitely better in Sheboygan if they just had more money. But we are not the United Way. We're the Common Council. We are not funding nonprofit organizations. That's up to the United Way churches and other groups. Fourth, the taxpayers expect their taxes to be used for city infrastructure. They do not want us to play generous with their tax money. If you aldermen wish to support nonprofit groups outside of that, use your own money, write out a personal check. Don't be so generous with other people's money. Number five, last year's finance committee agreed to provide the Boys and Girls Club with general fund money for one more year, 2003. They were told that 2003 was the last year of support from the general fund, and if they wanted further city funding, they would have to get it from block grants. At that time, we also discontinued the graduation money and uh, related charitable organizations. <clears throat> so if you want to, the city to support the block grant, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the Boys and Girls Fund, I encourage them to do it through the block grants. Finally, uh, the mayor has said that there's going to be no increase in funding this year. We have an opportunity as a council to actually live up to that and stop spending. One way we can do it is just to say no, the budget's set, let's move on. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Wangerman. <clears throat> uh, just to uh, reinforce again, what the, I can't possibly support you know, increasing the funding to them. The taxpayers have made it loud and clear that they want us to hold the line on the budget, and we can't do that by increasing spending for any reason. We've been called on to make a lot of difficult decisions, and unfortunately, the Boys and Girls Club is on that list. Uh, no one doubts their usefulness or their validity. That's not in question at all. But again, it's just another one of the tough decisions we're going to have to make. This has been a very difficult year. But the years coming up are going to make this year look like a Sunday school picnic compared to what's ahead of us. So things are going to get tougher and tougher. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Back to Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I will support this, this motion. That's why I seconded it. But um, there are some things that need to be cleared up. Uh, I was not on the council last year, so I was unaware of what the Finance Committee did then. And um, I don't know if, if everybody on the council last year knew that happened or not, because I don't know if there was a note made of that or, or not. But um, right now, on this floor, we can say, OK, this is the last year. You're going to have to go back to um, redevelopment or development, community development block grant funds and get any additional funds that you want. Um, we did make some tough decisions next year, and, and Alderman Wagman was right. Um, the next couple of years is going to be even worse. Uh, this funding, without raising taxes, could be taken from the assessment sidewalks that we just moved into the general fund. It could take $19,000 out of there, leaving approximately $10,000 left in that fund for any other um, items that may be necessary. Uh, true, the um, this is a, a, a contribution to a, a, a group, but what do they do? They serve our, 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 our young people in this community. Oftentimes you hear how there isn't anything that uh, the city is doing right now for any of the young people. And uh, this is a program that helps them, keeps them off the street, as Alderman um, 
Reinfleisch had said, uh, keeps them from becoming gang members, gives them a place to go and a purpose to go to. Um, so I will be supporting this, and I, I hope the majority of the council will support putting this back again. It will not increase the taxes. Thank you. Because you're using it from an assessment fund. Correct. Okay. Alderman Stepp? <clears throat> no, I... Oh, okay. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. As someone who grew up in Sheboygan in the 60s, I remember quite well what it was like to live in a city that had no place for, for the kids to go when they were teenagers. And there was no place uh, at all in the city of Sheboygan for kids to go other than to school and home and downtown and walk the streets, basically. Of course, the world's changed a lot, and I think it's even more important that we have a place for kids to go in the city of Sheboygan. And I think the Boys and Girls Club meets that need, I guess. Uh, I think that we need to find a way to come up with these funds. I would have supported that if we could have figured out any way. I think that if we take it out of the, the money that's already in the budget through a transfer such as this, I, I will support that completely. And some of the reasons, I truly believe that the Boys and Girls Club is an essential part of our community. A part that provides positive results that are difficult to measure today, but results that become apparent in the future. This is truly an, an investment in the future of Sheboygan. You see Alderman Ryan Fleisch is smiling because I agree with him today. And that's a good thing. But I think that the club teaches our youth that there is a difference between right and wrong. The club teaches our youth that it's cool to be responsible, respectful, and honest. The Boys and Girls Club provides opportunities for youth to learn leadership skills that will help them for the rest of their lives in their education, employment, and future as responsible adults in our community. The skills and knowledge they gain at the Boys and Girls Club will benefit them and our city for many years to come. And yes, the participation and involvement of our young people at the Boys and Girls Club does save taxpayers a lot of money. It does this by lowering the cost to deal with gangs, property crimes, violence, and of course drugs. The kids at the Boys and Girls Club are not going to become future criminals and drug users. They will become responsible, tax-paying citizens of our community, and that is the goal and the vision we should see as we unanimously support the Boys and Girls Club and its contribution to Sheboygan's future. These kids and, and a place for them to go is very important. And yes, it's a difficult budget year, and we've cut and slashed everywhere we can. We've squeezed pencils. There are departments who are probably going to have to bring paper from home, for Pete's sakes. But when it starts at the bottom with our kids and giving them a place to go, I think this is something we have to think about a little differently. It's not just dollars. And yes, Alderman Groff is right. CDBG funds next year come back for that full amount from Community Development Block Grant. That's what I would tell the Boys and Girls Club for 2005. Come back to CDBG funds, Community Development Block Grant funds that come from the federal government, which is our money anyway, and ask for more money f from them for that program. But for this year, let's get them through this. We've had presentations by the police department, the drug unit. We know what the problems are in the city. If we can help some of these kids and give them a place to go, I think we should do it, and I think we should support this. It's not increasing taxes. It's money that's there. We're going to use it someplace, and I think this is a good place to use it. Let's, let's face it, that money is not going to just sit there and get bigger. We're going to use it someplace else, and I think this is a good place to use it. Alderman Byrne. Excuse me for not rising. That's right. But I will support this program, too, because if these boys and girls clubs can prevent any juvenile from being shipped out of this county to Lincoln Hills, because right now it costs between forty-five and fifty thousand dollars a year that costs the taxpayer to ship these kids to Lincoln Hills. So for this nineteen thousand dollars, I think we're pretty well off. Thank you, Alderman Groff or Alderman Reinflesh, whichever. Would you please add to your motion and amendment to this that you're taking the money out of the debt fund? Because tomorrow I'm not going to be. I will Looking so for the money. That. Okay. All right. Rich, so we know that's where it's coming from. It'll, it'll be an increase in general fund appropriations. All right. Okay. So you are adjusting the tax levy by that amount, but you, you've, you've adjusted the other revenues here tonight by more than more that. Right. Amount, right. Okay. It will increase the tax levy just about a penny per thousand. Look at that. 
everyone understand that? But then in turn, the revenue that we put in will offset that, that $80,000. I'm saying compared to not putting it in. Yes. So this does increase the tax revenue. Yeah, the choice where you put it in or not put it in, I'm saying it does. It, well, it, it basically balances out. If we take it out of that sidewalk assessment, that we just moved into revenue, it should have no effect on, on it except raising the, um, the expenditures. I agree you provided for an offset tonight. Right. Yeah, okay. Thank you. It will, not take, it will not come from that source. It will be the general fund okay. appropriation. Okay. But you got an offset of revenues. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Alderman Stephan. So I want to be clear, I mean, what we've done, we've done, but if we do this, we are increasing taxes, but not as much as, I mean, if we wouldn't do anything with it, it would, the taxes would go down, correct? If we would make the other changes, but not this right. one, taxes would go down. So we really are increasing taxes by doing this, so let's not fool people. I just want to say I agree with all three of the statements made by the gentleman, but nobody's answered the two core questions, and that is, why not fund it from Community Block Grant? I want to be clear, because Alderman Werner made a statement. Now, Paulette, it's my understanding we haven't allocated the 2004 block grant program, right? So by telling them to go to community block grant, we're not saying go in 2005. We're saying you can get it in 2004 if you're approved. What happens is the applications went out in the mail, and we'll be reviewing applications in January, February. And then that goes before um, a citizen committee. And staff makes recommendations to that committee, and then they vote on those appropriations. And then that actually, they actually get funded, it's usually late summer, early fall. Right. But I mean, it would get that money this year. It would be under, you know, like I said, it's a goofy system because it's not January to December like us. It's, you know, July they, to July or May to, you know. They received 2003 funds in October of this year. Right. I mean, so they would get it for their 2004 budget year. So I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying they don't deserve it. I'm not saying all the kids at Lincoln Hills, we're not saving money. We are. But the fact is we can do it through the community block grant, and I think we also have to remember, what was the total they got last year? Was it 22,000, 12,000 in community block grant, I believe, and 10,000 in the general fund? That's $22,000. Now, they're getting $17,000 this year in the community block grant fund. Odds are they would get that next year. You're throwing another 19, you're gonna give them 36,000. If you, if you give it to them this way and that way, they're getting 36,000. I don't think that any, any citizen is thinking, we're cutting every other department of our own departments and we're gonna be given 150% raise to this group. I mean, like I said, they're a wonderful group, don't get me wrong. And if you wanna give them 150% in community block grants because some other agency isn't performing, that's fine because you're still spending the same amount of money in community block grants. You've got that much money to allocate, allocate it as you will it, but that's a fairer way because there they're up against all the other agencies that do wonderful things. So I wanna be clear that, you know, they still have an opportunity to get this money this year in their budget for this year. So it's not like they'd lose it. If they're worthy, I'm sure they'll get it. And like Paulette has said two or three times, her staff is going to recommend it because they do feel they do a wonderful job. Alderman Perez. Alderman Perez, did you want? No. no. Oh, I thought you motioned before to speak. No, no, I was just, no. <laughs> I, I guess what I was saying is I, I, we're, we're supposed to rise when we speak? Yes. Okay. I was just going to say that. I was just going to tell them that next. Okay. Alderman Ryan Flesh. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Just a point of clarification, Paulette, then, what did they receive from the general operating funds last year, and what did they receive from the community block grant last year? 19,000 and 17,000. I think in uh, 2000, from CDBG, in 2002, they received 10, 2003, uh, it was 17. Okay. Um, and to respond to Jerry Doyle, they received 17,000 from block grants, we heard, and 19,000 from... Yeah. From general, so we're actually not giving them any more than they already got last year, though. Is that correct? No, no. Last year they got twelve and ten. They got twelve from, right? They got nineteen. The no, previous they year 19. they got nineteen thousand and ten thousand. Nineteen thousand from general fund and ten thousand from block grants. So this year they received seven thousand dollars more in funding than the previous year, in anticipation of the loss of general funds. The total loss of general funds is what the anticipation was. Okay. Um, I guess I, I would like to discuss then the opportunity with Rich that what do we give them that keeps the levy at zero cents per thousand? 
um, and still gives them approximately what they got last year combined between the community block grants and general operating funds. I mean, I, I'm not looking to raise the amount of money we're giving them to the total. I'm making make sure that they stay operating at, for this point in time. <clears throat> <laughs> what dollar amount with these totals that we're looking at um, do we give them that one gives them the same combined total that they got last year from community block grants which is only a recommendation we don't know if they're going to get that 17,000 or not but assume it's 17,000 plus what they got from general operating last year what do we need to take out of this transfer for, um, to equal that dollar amount without raising the levy by that one cent per thousand I guess we can't really clarify what's available here yet from, from the documents from that portion. So I don't know if we can really recognize what, what is in that or the, if you're looking for the difference in the general fund. But, um, you know, originally, I, you know, going way back, I, I guess I looked at, it was on my computer back to 93, they were receiving like $20,000 uh, about 10 years ago. So that's been, since they started receiving the block grants, then that increased their appropriations in total from the 20000 up to the 36000 this year. But I do agree with what was stated before by Alderman uh, Stephan and Alderman Doyle that the Finance Committee, I think uh, the Chair Terry Van Akron stated that it was to be given with a very uh, definite statement that this would be the last year the general fund would, would fund that appropriation. And from then on, they would be able to the block grants. And I think that was made pretty clear last year. Okay. Alderman Van Ecker. How much did they ask for in this year's block grant for 04? They haven't yet. 19. Okay. They didn't come in yet for 2004. That'll happen in January or February. Have an application to file, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you don't know what amount they're going to put on there. No, maybe? no. Okay, yes. Okay, we have a motion before us, an amendment for the money for the Boys and Girls Club. Would you call the roll, please? I vote would be for the amendment. No vote, obviously, is against amendment. Brock. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemere. Aye. Moody. Perez? Aye. Reinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? No. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? No. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Abstain. Doyle? No. Motion carried. Alderman Groff? Your Honor, as amended, I would move that a resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second a resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Alderman Stephan. Your Honor, I would, as an amendment to this, uh, could we send a letter and tell them that we're not going to do it again? I would make some move. Just so it's clear and everybody knows they're not getting the money out of the general fund anymore. Apparently that was some, you know, some of the aldermen felt that it was not fair. So I guess if that's appropriate, I'd make that motion at this time. Now we send a letter to them saying this, it's our understanding this will be the last year. You get it, obviously, the next council could change their mind, but clearly they'd be notified and we wouldn't have to worry about any misunderstandings. Who's they? The Boys yeah, and Girls Club. No, no. Who do you want to send a letter? I don't really care if it's the council or the finance committee or you or yeah, whatever. If I may. Yep. Go ahead. That, there's no it, second. It, it, it could come, a letter could come from council saying, uh, or excuse me, from, uh, from finance committee saying uh, your appropriation that you received uh, for 2004 will be the last appropriation that you get from uh, the general fund. Um, and uh, we can send it out of finance if that would be acceptable. Okay. All right. Is there any discussion on that? All in favor of finance sending a letter? 
Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, now the motion is there. Would you call the roll, please? The motion to, to accept the budget the way it is. As amended. As amended. Could you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 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 Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bird? Or Bauman, excuse me? Aye. Bird? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Grapp? Aye. Motion carried. Second. Moved and seconded adjourned. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor?